Let's talk about multiple system atrophy. So this is a neurodegenerative disease where the main pathologic hallmark is the glial cytoplasmic inclusions of alpha synuclein. Remember that this is an alpha synucleinopathy as opposed to a tauopathy. The mean age of onset is 54 years old and the cause is unknown. So neuron loss in different parts of the brain or spinal cord can cause the different symptoms. Autonomic dysfunction is fairly prominent and it arises from neuron loss in the intermedial lateral cell column and the ventrolateral medulla. Particularly, you can see uh, fairly commonly problems with bladder function such as retention or incontinence as well as erectile dysfunction and that's thought to arise from dysfunction in Onuf's nucleus in the ventral sacral spinal cord. Parkinsonism can be observed due to neuron loss in the basal ganglia and substantia nigra and cerebellar ataxia seems to arise from neuron loss in the cerebellum and pons. So there are two main motor subtypes there's a predominant Parkinsonism subtype, or MSAP, and with that you can see main prominent features of bradykinesia, rigidity, postural instability. There seems to be more commonly a action or postural tremor as opposed to a resting tremor. Because the basal ganglia are affected, you can also see other common uh, symptoms that can arise from that, such as chorea, dystonia, myoclonus, hemibolism, and sometimes you can see dysphagia as well. For the other motor subtype, the predominant cerebellar ataxia subtype, or MSAC, you can see classic cerebellar symptoms such as gait or limb ataxia, scanning dysarthria, nystagmus, impaired smooth pursuits, dysmetria, and dysphagia. Note that as the disease progresses, a person's subtype can change as well. So autonomic is a uh, main early feature of multiple system atrophy as compared to Parkinson's disease where it arises later. And the main presentations can include erectile dysfunction in men, orthostatic hypotension, and urinary retention, urgency, or incontinence. Sleep disorders are common as well, the main one being REM sleep behavior disorder, which is a dream enacting behavior which can arise even years before the patient is diagnosed with a alpha synucleinopathy such as multiple system atrophy or Parkinson. There can also be nocturnal strider as well as obstructive and central sleep apnea. So an MRI of the brain it can either be normal or sometimes they'll test you on what the pons will look like. So there can be atrophy of the putamen, pons, and middle cerebellar peduncles. In particular, there's a hot cross bun sign. So these are what hot cross buns look like. And due to degeneration of the transverse fibers, you can have this characteristic looking picture of the pons on the MRI. For diagnosis, a definitive diagnosis is arrived at only by autopsy. However, a clinical diagnosis can be given in life that can be either probable or possible. Generally, the symptom onset has to be in someone greater than 30 years old. And there has to be either urinary incontinence and erectile dysfunction or orthostatic blood pressures. There also needs to be either Parkinsonism that is not responsive to levodopa or cerebellar symptoms. For treatment, unfortunately, there is no disease modifying agent. Levodopa can be partially helpful early on for Parkinsonism, but it generally will not work long term. For focal dystonias, uh, botulinum toxin can be helpful. For orthostatic hypotension, the classic medications can be used, including fludrocortisone, droxydopa, or midodrine. Uh, caution using this in people with supine hypertension. For strider or sleep apneas, CPAP or tracheostomy uh, can be used, and it has been helpful for some patients. 
Lastly, physical therapy and occupational therapy can be helpful for pretty much all patients, and that's for fall prevention as well as for equipment. And since dysphagia is fairly common in either of the motor subtypes, then speech therapy can also be helpful. For prognosis, patients tend to become wheelchair bound roughly three to five years after diagnosis, and death typically occurs six to 10 years after diagnosis.